in general, I mean, this is something that that has been driving me crazy lately that I think uh, the left, and, and in this case, like when I say that, I really mean like, you know, the left. I'm not just using it as a <laughs> like, right. you know. Uh, but, um, you know, I think the actual left just need to have a much, much better message about crime because I think there's an overwhelming amount of statistical evidence that this is a major concern for working class voters who uh, should be their base. And to the extent that the message in practice is, well, if you if you think there's something there to worry about, um, you're just wrong or you've been fooled by the media or or you're, um, you know, you really like this. This is really like covering up for some sort of ugly prejudice or whatever, even though um, like every poll of black voters specifically shows, you know, massive concern about about street crime. And I think there are better things the left could say about this that, you know, just, just for one thing that, um, you know, I mean, there is actually a fair amount of criminological research showing that, um, that if you have uh, higher wages and give everybody healthcare and, you know, and stuff like that, that that actually does, you know, that actually does decrease street crime. Now, I don't know, I'm not going to pretend to, to know how exactly you could translate that fact into political messaging, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to see people try. Uh, yeah, de definitely. I, I, I always think about, you know, how you can talk about this in, in a way that's not simply, you know, more cops forever, because right. even, even that, I mean, even the, the easy way out and it, rhetorically, right. Is not just going to magically make it all better. You know, if you elect Republicans tomorrow and Lee Zeldin becomes governor of New York, you're still going to have these crises. And the mayor and the governor right now in New York are putting a lot more cops on the subway. Now, um, some of the crime is overstated, at least in New York, where the media and disingenuous people um, you know, inflate or take statistics out of context. But yes, there is this very real fear and very real concern, particularly in communities of color, about crime. You cannot hand wave that away at all. For me, I, I think one of the big things the left really should talk more about, and actually wrote a piece um, in Substack about this recently, is mental health treatment and, and psychiatric treatment and really um, bringing back humane places where the mentally ill can go and live out their lives, uh, obviously, uh, psychiatric institutions are, well, they were taboo. I don't know if they're taboo anymore, but we had this whole deinstitutionalization movement in the 60s and 70s and 80s, and it was well-intentioned, but ultimately from a policy perspective, it was disastrous because you released many thousands of people out onto the streets with no adequate social safety net for them. The community health care centers were not... Um, nearly um, enough and, and we're not um, up to the task of handling these people. And you can see almost a straight line between um, the deinstitutionalization movement and the rise in incarceration rates. In essence, a lot of people who struggled with mental illness went from psychiatric institutions, which were very flawed and, and had a lot of problems, I don't want to sugarcoat them, into prisons, which are worse. And we have to find a way of dealing with mentally ill people um, in, in cities, in towns, I, I think uh, funding psychiatric beds, funding treatment. I mean, this is where the universal healthcare message comes back right. because a lot of psychiatrists don't take Medicaid. Um, you have, it's such a Byzantine and expensive system. It really is a nightmare and no one will fix it. So, you know, mental health treatment alone isn't going to get you there, but funding a, a huge increase in psychiatric beds and facilities, I, I think could make a difference in the long term, even with the homelessness problem as well. And talking about ways to get people the treatment that they need. And that's where that's that's where the conversation can get complicated because there are those on the left who don't like the idea of, of a judge decreeing that this person must receive psychiatric treatment. But there are times where, you know, uh, an individual is in desperate need of help and this is the only way they can be helped. So or, that or, alone is or, not going to, yeah. Yeah, or drug treatment. Yes, dr drug drug treatment. And honestly, you know, it's 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 a broken system from top to bottom. And and you see a, a lot of the crime, at least now in in New York, that, that I see and read about 
it is committed by people who, quite frankly, if they saw a police officer nearby them, wouldn't even be that deterred, would probably just carry on and shove someone, you know, uh, on subway tracks because they're in this psychotic state. And this doesn't describe all criminals. You have many criminals who are not this way. But I do think this this very complicated issue needs to be grappled with on the left, certainly, and I think other <laughs> on the right as well, because the right doesn't really care about mental health treatment at all or funding this, right? Or funding oh, I mean, definitely not. This. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I, I think that, you know, my critique of some of the left on this is I think that we've become a little bit too libertarian about some of this uh, that, you know, that I, I'm, you know, just in a sort of basic values way. I'm a socialist. I actually want the government to help people. And, um, and so I think like, uh, you know, there's this sort of, I mean, I, I think, you know, you mentioned issues about unhoused people. And I think oftentimes the way this plays out is that like this sort of, really dystopian kind of neoliberal fix of like, oh, just let them sleep in the park is, uh, yeah. is kind of taken it as the uh, as the humane option, you know, and, it, and it's like, look, no, certainly kicking people out without giving them a place to go is, is not better. But I mean, it's like you, you have to, uh, but like ultimately what I want is for, you know, certainly government provided, you know, social housing, uh, like, like real permanent housing, but also, uh, mental health treatment for people who need mental health treatment, uh, addiction counseling for people who need that. And by the way, I don't think that can be entirely voluntary because if you've ever, yeah. met, if, if, if you've ever met an addict, right. You know, that's that usually like if it's voluntary, yeah. it will not exist. Um, so, you know, that's the, uh, that, that seems like, and, and I also think like there's also just a level on which, um, you know, to quote one of my least favorite uh, people, uh, you know, it's the economy stupid is actually like a um, is actually a reasonable thing to say about a lot of this stuff, because as far as crime that is not linked to mental health, drug abuse, etc. Um, yeah, look, I'm not I'm not saying like, oh, you just have a um, economically equal society and there's like zero crime. That would obviously be ridiculous. Uh, people people commit acts of interpersonal violence for all kinds of reasons, if you think about domestic violence and other things. But um, that said, uh, if you think about the things that really drive up the rate of violent crime, you know, there are not a lot of kids who grew up in the suburbs and end up joining gangs. And there is a reason for that, right? I mean, like, like, like the sort of primary drivers of that really are economic. Another thing, too, is I feel like there has been a big rise in, in homelessness and in uh, some of these street crimes, but you're not going to hear a lot of Democrats uh, try to address not only homelessness, but also like the fentanyl problem that is exasperating a lot of this. Um, but it's it's a messy issue that's going to be expensive and there needs to be a lot of structural change. And the Democrats aren't really interested in going to bat for those issues. Well, ho homelessness, especially where you've had generations of failure on the left and the right when it comes to homelessness. I mean, one of the, the big policy disasters along with deinstitutionalization um, in New York was the utter, um, utter obliteration of the SROs, the single room, room um, occupancy housing, which was very cheap hotel style housing where poor people, um, addicts, uh, young people, you know, people with not a lot of money and not a lot to their name could find a place to sleep at night. And, you know, th th this housing problem, it, it is in part a supply problem. And, and you get into the old EMB versus NIMBY debate. And I definitely think we have to build more. We have to build the right kind of housing, but you absolutely have to build more. And I, I do think some of this homelessness, not all of it, um, would be addressed with very cheap, readily available and humane housing. And I, and I go back to the SRO style housing because, you know, the idea of having a room of your own is very important. In New York, you have a right to shelter. But that means going to the homeless shelter system, which is not a place a lot of people want to be. There are people who prefer sleeping outside to being in a shelter because it can be very dangerous. Your stuff isn't safeguarded. Um, there are a lot of problems associated with shelters. Whereas if you have a room, you can have a room, you, you can have a bathroom or a shared bathroom, right? 
Um, certainly dorm living is something college kids don't mind. Um, but I would say an ideally the SRO styles that you'd build would have each their own bathroom and like a little kitchen and a bed and something like that. And it would be far more humane than what you currently have, which is either a dilapidated shelter system or people just sleeping outside the tent encampments, which is a huge problem on the West Coast, um, much more than on the East Coast, at least in New York. I mean, the West Coast tent problem really is, I mean, you go to Skid Row in LA, it, it is shocking to see it um, in person. And you have to get those people housing and you have to build housing and you have to get them mental health treatment if they want it. I think Ben brought up the issue of compelling people into treatment. It's a real discussion to have. There are people who will refuse and refuse, um, but you know, if they are court ordered to get treatment, they probably would and their lives may be better for it. So that's another conversation, a hard one to have, but I, I tend to agree with Ben where it's strange that you'll hear socialist talk, at least in the last few years, talk like libertarians, right? This idea that if you defund services, they get better. That was the argument coming out of the, you know, the libertarian right for a very long time. We'll cut education funding, right? Or cut funding to roads or bridges and trains. And suddenly things will improve because people will be free and they'll, they'll pay less in taxes. We know that's not true. And, and the same is true on the mental health side. The same is true in the policing side. I mean, the prison discussion is a fascinating one. So on one hand, I, I think I support the ultimate goal of abolition in kind of the ideal abstract sense. But in, in the real day-to-day -day sense, the best prisons in the world are those that are well-funded. And you look at the Scandinavian model, for example, where these are true rehabilitation facilities where you, you go away for a certain amount of time, you get the wraparound services, you get um, training, job training, uh, you, get, you get mental health care. They truly are facilities that try to make you a better person. So when you return to society, you are not going to commit crimes again. That costs money, right? You can't just say defund all the prisons and they'll get better. They won't. They'll just, they'll be worse. And that's, again, not the easiest conversation to have, but I, I, I agree where the left really has to get off this libertarian kick when it comes to, I think, stuff like mental health, um, when it comes to criminal justice. You're, you're not solving problems by slashing budget lines in half, at least I don't think you will. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>